Hello bookworms, it's Jade from Bedtime Bookworm and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here with my May wrap up slash reading vlog. Overall, I'd say that I had a pretty good reading month in May. Quantity-wise, I didn't read as much as I would have liked to, but one of the books that I read was quite long. It probably counts for like two books. And then on top of that, I have just been indulging in some of my other hobbies lately. I've been playing a lot more video games. My husband and I played this really fun game this month called A Way Out. It's a two-person game. Like you have to have two people to be able to play it and you guys have to work together to figure out different puzzles and stuff, but it's about these two guys that are breaking out of jail. It was so much fun. I've never played a cooperative game like that before and it wasn't too hard for me as like an amateur gamer who is terrible at aiming at things. And then also we've been playing a lot of Pokemon Go lately. Ever since they came out with the daily tasks and being able to get legendary Pokemon from those not and not just from raids, we've gotten totally sucked back in. We're going on raids a few times a week and we've also participated in the last two community days and that's going to be a staple of our month going forward. So I have been indulging in my video game hobby a little bit more this month and that's taken away a little bit from my reading time but I'm still really happy with the amount of reading and mostly the quality of reading that I got done this month. So before we get into the vlog section just a quick recap. I read four things this month and those were Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng, Little Fires Everywhere also by Celeste Ng, The Fires of Heaven by Robert Jordan which is the fifth book in the Wheel of Time series, the last book that I finished on the very last last day I read The Book of M by Peng Shepherd, which was an e-arc that I received so thank you to the publishers for an early copy in exchange for an honest review. As far as my ratings for this month I had a really good month. I had three five stars and one four star read. So while I didn't read a lot quantity wise I think the quality of what I read was really good this month. I am leaving timestamps down in the description box for each section of the video where I talk about the different books so feel free to check that out if you're particularly interested in my thoughts on one of these books. Otherwise, just stay tuned for my May reading vlog. Hello bookworms! So it is like May 10th and I have finished two books already. I am on a roll right now with reading. The first two books that I finished this month were Contemporaries and they were actually both by Celeste Ng. I've read both of her books now and I can happily say I have a new favorite author. I loved both of these books. So the first one that I read was her debut book, Everything I Never Told You. I read this because I pulled it out of my TBR jar for my spring TBR. I had put on hold a physical copy from my library and when it came in there were other people on hold for it as well so I had a limited amount of time to read it so I started it as soon as I could. I actually ended up listening to this mostly on audiobook through Hoopla but this is what I mean about requesting books from the library and having things on hold being my push to actually read a book at a certain time. I thought the narrator did a good job but it wasn't anything mind-blowing. Like I wouldn't necessarily recommend listening to it over reading it in other formats but the narrator was good. If you're not familiar everything I never told you is a... actually I'm not sure if it's considered to be YA or adult, I feel like it could go either way because it's about a family and some of those members of the family are in high school and would fit kind of like the young adult age category. But at the same time you also get insight into some of the adults in the family. So I'm not really sure. I tried to look and see what it had been marketed as. I think from what I can tell it had been marketed as an adult book, but I feel like this is one of those that could really go either way. Anyways, it's a story about a family. It's a mixed race family, so the mother of this family is Caucasian and the father is second generation Chinese. At the very beginning of the story, this book has a semi-famous first line. It starts out with saying Lydia is dead, and Lydia is one of the daughters in this family. So this whole book you kind of unravel the dynamics of the family and you, you know, look into the past of the parents and different things that happened to the kids while they were growing up and by the end of the story you find out what actually happened to Lydia and how she died. So it's definitely not a mystery at all but it has that little bit of a mystery element that kind of pulls you through to the end of the story because you want to know what happened to Lydia. I cannot believe that this was Celeste Ng's debut book because it was so good. She touches on a lot of themes but primarily she touches on racism and the struggles that biracial couples go through 
that mixed kids deal with when they're growing up. So there's definitely a race element to the story. She also has a lot of like feminist aspects to it. Like the mother of the family was a scientist and wanted to go to med school, but then she ended up not being able to because she got pregnant. So there's definitely that element as well. This was set in the 70s and 80s to give you a little bit of perspective. The story is definitely not told in a chronological order. If I had heard that before, I probably would have thought that would have been very confusing, but it actually wasn't confusing at all. Celeste Ng did an amazing job of jumping back and forth in different times of this family, but always making it clear exactly what time period you were in. And I was never confused about what time in their lives I was visiting at the moment. I've never read a book that had such a fluid sense of time and like jumping around in time that wasn't confusing. And Celeste Ng also does such an amazing job of giving you little bits and pieces of information at exactly the right time to help you tie together different loose ends of the story. I just, it was masterfully done. I am still in awe. It was so good. I loved the family dynamics. It really highlights how complicated families can be and the relationships between siblings and the relationships between, you know, kids and parents. Nothing is black and white in this book and every character in it was just so complex. I will say that I definitely identified with Lydia the most. I really identified with her struggle to please her parents but at the same time figure out who she is and like live her own life. I don't know what else to say guys. The hype is real even though the hype has really died down for this book but it was awesome and I definitely recommend it. Okay moving on to the next book. So then I read Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng which is her second book and I read that because I had a work book club meeting just last night where we were discussing this book. This one I had put on hold at my library months ago when it was selected as the next book club read and I did not make much progress on those hold lists because there are just so many people who are on hold for this. I had I swear like 10 different versions like e-copies, audiobooks, physical copies, so many different versions of this book on hold. I even had some large print copies on hold because I thought maybe those would come through but they didn't. I blame Reese Witherspoon because she's gonna make a movie out of this and has been publicizing it and so now everybody wants to read it apparently. I don't blame them because it was really good. So in the end I ended up using a audible credit and I ended up actually buying it myself. I also really enjoyed this narrator. Again I don't know if it was really a better experience than reading it. She was good but she wasn't like mind-blowing. So this story is about it's about so much. It's so hard to summarize this book. It's about primarily these two families, the Richardsons and the, I actually don't know what the other family's last name is, but a mother-daughter duo who rents an apartment from the Richardsons, and that mother is an artist. So she's kind of had a pretty nomadic lifestyle with her child. They move around, and she's a photographer, so she moves to wherever inspiration takes her, stays there, works on a project, and then moves on again. So very different lifestyle from the Richardsons, who are very, you know, upper white middle class, have a really nice house, they have four kids, they've always pretty much had a housekeeper. But it's about like the dynamics between these two families because the daughter of the artist Pearl ends up becoming like really good friends with the kids of the Richardsons. And there's also this other storyline about a Chinese baby that gets adopted by a white couple, which I know a lot of people talk about as being like, really important to the story. And it, I mean, it is pretty important to the story, but that storyline doesn't even get started until like a quarter of the way through the book. I was listening to this with my mom and she asked me what it was about and I told her mostly it was about this Chinese baby storyline because that's what I thought and we kind of laughed about it because that didn't even happen until like a quarter of the way through the book. So the story is about a lot. There's a lot of different storylines going on but they all intertwine together beautifully. There are a lot of similar themes in this book as I saw in Everything I Never Told You such as race. But this book has so many more themes. It touches a lot on mother-daughter relationships and like what what makes a parent? Is it your biology or is it, you know, who raises you? Is it who loves you? It touches on infertility issues, adoption, choosing what kind of life you want to live. Just so many things. It just amazes me how many layers this book has and the way Celeste Ng was able to intertwine all those storylines and layers and in the end pretty much 
tie it up seamlessly everything pretty much comes full, full circle there were like a few things that i wish had been wrapped up a little more nicely but honestly that's life you know life doesn't wrap up nicely there was always going to be some loose ends and that's kind of how i felt the ending was this book just really highlights how complicated people and family can be and you know reminds you not to judge other people because you don't know what's going on in their lives it was just so interesting guys i highly highly recommend little fires everywhere again the hype is so real i guess i didn't say but i gave everything i never told you five stars that one probably if i was doing half stars i would have given four and a half but i I definitely wouldn't round it down to four so I gave it five on Goodreads and then Little Fires Everywhere I definitely gave five stars highest rating I could ever give a book I loved it that much and it's funny I was telling my friend Sashana that reading Little Fires Everywhere made me want to give everything I never told you four stars but in the end I decided that Little Fires Everywhere was just an even better five stars <laughs> Okay, so those are the two books that I have read so far, and I will check in with you guys when I've read something else. Hey guys, I'm here to update you on another book that I finished in the month of May. I've spent a lot of this month reading The Fires of Heaven by Robert Jordan. This was a reread for me. I love this series, as I'm sure you are tired of hearing me say, and I gave this book five out of five stars. I have a physical copy of this book, an e-copy of this book, and an audio copy of this book, all of which I personally paid for with my own money and I own. I am a little bit obsessed with this series, <laughs> if you couldn't tell. I did mostly listen to this on audio and occasionally I read it on ebook. I didn't really read my physical copy very much. I did film a review and video diary of my experience reading this book. The review section is spoiler free, but the video diary is full of spoilers. That's the point of the video diary is to go into spoilers about the book. And it's definitely like a really long video, but it's intended to be. So I'm not gonna talk too much about it here because if you want more information on my thoughts, you can go check out at least the review portion of that video. But basically this was a really good installment in the series. I didn't love it quite as much as I loved book four. So far book four has been my favorite in the series. This one, the pacing was a little bit off. I'd say like the second half of the book, pacing was great, things were moving, things were happening, lots of exciting things happened. And even the first quarter of the book wasn't too bad, but that middle 25 to 50% definitely slogged a little bit. There was a lot of character building, a lot of world building, and just kind of like laying groundwork. As someone who loves this series and loves these characters, I didn't mind it, but I definitely noticed that there was a little bit of a slowdown in the pacing in that like second quarter of the book. And the last book, book four, definitely had a lot of really big reveals. And while this one also has reveals, it wasn't quite as impactful, I think, as the fourth book. I just love the complexity of this world. There are so many different countries and cities and cultures of people from all of those countries and cities. There's a lot of political intrigue. There are like myths and legends that are in this world. There's just so much about it that I love. If you guys are interested in hearing more about this series, I did do like an introduction to Wheel of Time video that I can link for you. I'm gonna be reading one of these every month from here on out. So I don't know what I'm gonna say in these wrap ups about them because I think I'm gonna to continue to do these book review and book diary things. But basically I really enjoyed my time reading it. The audiobook is fantastic for this whole series and I'm gonna to continue to listen to it on audio because I think especially as a rereader, that's a really great way to go about reading the series. I hope I have one more book to talk to you about before the end of the month. I have about three days left and I'm about halfway through a book right now and I'm gonna try really hard to finish it because I wanna include it in this wrap up if I can. All right, I'll check in with you later. Hey guys, so May is over and I did finish one more book before the end of the month. I totally squeezed it in at the last minute. I had like 20, maybe 25% left of this book on the 31st, the last day of the month. And I sat down for like two hours straight and just plowed through the end of it because I was enjoying it, but also because I wanted to be able to include it in this wrap up. I've actually already attempted to film this clip once and this book is really hard for me to talk about so I am trying it again because I didn't say all the things that I wanted to say in my last attempt. So the book that I finished was The Book of M by Pang Shepard and this was an e-arc that I received from either NetGalley or Edelweiss in exchange for an honest review. 
So I requested this book because it's a post-apocalyptic story and I love me some post-apocalyptic stories. And the premise was really interesting. Basically the disease or plague in this world is that people start to lose their shadows. This phenomenon starts to spread across the globe and you know we can't really explain it scientifically. I will say for those of you who like to have some sort of scientific explanation, this book even though it's like post-apocalyptic, it's also kind of fantasy because there's definitely magic. There is no scientific explanation for shadows disappearing. What the world learns is that there are consequences to losing your shadow. The one that they don't realize at first is that people who lose their shadow are gaining a new ability. But this new ability comes at a cost, which they do notice. The cost is that they start to lose their memories. When they lose their memories, it starts out being like really little things, but then it gets to be bigger and bigger things to the point Point where it becomes life-threatening and people die. I'm not gonna tell you what the ability people gain from losing their shadow because I looked at the synopsis on Goodreads and it doesn't say. So I guess technically that's a spoiler even though you kind of figure it out pretty early in the book. So that's the world building premise of the book. But let me tell you about the characters that we're actually following. So this is a diverse read. One of the main characters is Orly, short for Orlando, and he from what I could tell is Asian American I'm pretty sure, like Chinese American I think. And his wife Max was African American. So at the beginning of the book Max loses her shadow and she runs away from Orly because she doesn't want to have him watch her forget things and forget him. So she runs away and he basically is trying to chase her. So that's one of the storylines. We get point of views from both of them. We get Orly's point of view, which is in third person, like most of the book is in third person. But then Max's point of views are actually in second person because she takes a tape recorder with her and like talks into the tape recorder as if she's talking to Orly. And so her chapters are written in second person, which I actually really enjoyed. I don't always like second person narration, but it really worked, especially in this book. And it was only her point of view. And then you also get point of views from other characters. It's a multi-perspective book and you're seeing views from lots of other people. And there's different ethnicities, there's different sexual orientations and things like that. The author herself, Peng Shepard, is also a author of color. I think she's some sort of Asian. So if you're looking for a diverse read, I think this would definitely fulfill those requirements. I mean, they're not requirements, but you know what I mean. It's a diverse read. Okay, so those are some basics on what the story is about. Now let me tell you what I thought about it. For about the first 50%, I was intrigued, but there were definitely moments where I was like, am I really enjoying myself? I'm not sure. Like I questioned myself a few times. And what I want to say is that while this is a post-apocalyptic story, this magical element that's added to it and the way that it's written adds almost like a magical realism feel to it, which really kind of clashes with this post-apocalyptic trying to survive vibe as well. It was just a really strange reading experience for me. There is that survival aspect to it, but at the same time, there's this magic in the world and a little bit of like a whimsical feel to it at times. I wasn't sure how I felt about that juxtaposition between those two different styles. I can't really say if I think that she did it well or not. Like there are times that I liked it and times that I didn't. So when I originally finished this book, I gave it a three star rating because there were so many moments while I was reading it that I was just like questioning myself as far as like well am I really enjoying this do I like this like I can't decide if I like this that I ended up giving it a three star rating but after sitting on it for two or three days I just could not stop thinking about the ending of this book going towards the ending I was kind of like this is really predictable like I think I know what's gonna happen but there is a twist and it did surprise me and I just love the ending especially like the very last scene I love how everything wrapped up and the idea that's really explored by this book is just who are we without our memories and how do our memories make us who we are and I just thought it was fascinating I could not stop thinking about this book for a couple days it's like I'm still thinking about it it's just it was a really fascinating book so even though at times I was kind of questioning myself as far as like how much I was enjoying it it was interesting and it was thought-provoking and for those reasons I ended up bumping it actually from a three to a four star rating if anything that I said about this book intrigues you I say try it check it out it's definitely a unique book I've never read anything like it before 
I really enjoyed it. It definitely is slower paced. You know, it's just paced like an adult book is, you know, like not super action packed, which you might expect from something that's post apocalyptic. I wouldn't go into this expecting like a traditional post apocalyptic story. I definitely recommend checking it out if you guys think it's at all interesting. It is coming out on June 5th, which by the time this video comes out, it will be released. Keep an eye out for it. If you've read it, let me know what you think because this is definitely one that I want to discuss with people. All right, bye. Okay, so those are all the books that I've read in May. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you like bookish content. I post one to two times a week. That is all I have for now. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, bookworms, keep reading. Bye.